Faulty Towers is a classic sitcom that came on the air in 1975 and only lasted for two series of six episodes each before ending in 1979. Despite the relatively short run of the classic comedy, the show is still popular today thanks to its groundbreaking sense of humour. While the majority of the show's 12 episodes are widely regarded as classic television, there is one episode that is viewed as controversial nowadays due to a racist rant given by one of its supporting characters. Join Facts First as we explore that scene that took Faulty Towers off the air for good. Faulty Towers was a unique comedy for its time. Faulty Towers began airing on the BBC in 1975, and it became a quick hit with audiences thanks to its groundbreaking sense of humour. The show can be seen as a precursor to the darker comedies of today, though that's not to say the show was depressing. Despite its dry sense of humour, the show remained likeable thanks to the charm of its cast. Leading the cast were John Cleese and Connie Booth, who also created the series. They were husband and wife at the time. The show revolved around John Cleese's character of Basil Fawlty, who was a decidedly temperamental hotel owner. It ran for one series in 1975, and then another in 1979, totalling two series and 12 episodes. Before Fawlty Towers premiered, the BBC was sceptical of the show. They initially didn't think the audiences would appreciate the dry, dark humour. John Cleese was already well known for his work with his comedy troupe Monty Python. The comedy troupe's work up until that point could be seen as a precursor to Faulty Towers, but the 1975 sitcom was attempting to bring that sense of humour to a wider audience. Beyond this, there was also a unique charm to the show that came entirely from John Cleese and his then wife. Despite the fact that John and Connie were not doing well in their marriage during the time that they were working on the show, they came together to make it special. John Cleese has claimed that he came up with the idea for his character on Faulty Towers after meeting a hotel owner with a similar temperament during his travels with Monty Python. He then brought the idea home to his wife and they pitched it to the BBC. The program ended up being picked up to run on BBC Two. Just one episode of the show was produced at first, and it aired before any other shows went into production. It wasn't until the successful airing of this pilot episode that the BBC decided to order a full series. Faulty Towers was an unlikely hit with audiences. It didn't take too long for the first series of Faulty Towers to catch on with audiences, whose sense of humour proved decidedly more advanced than the suits that the BBC had initially given them credit for. However, when the BBC came to John Cleese and Connie Booth begging for another series, they found that there was trouble at home. The main reason that the second series of Faulty Towers didn't end up airing until 1979 was that John and Connie were going through a divorce. They kept the divorce a secret from those involved in the show's production and maintained a positive working relationship in order to get the second series of the show done. They ended up being proud of their work, though both John and Connie decided following the airing of Faulty Towers' second series that no more series were necessary. There are two main reasons why John Cleese and Connie Booth came to the mutual decision to end Faulty Towers after only producing 12 episodes. For one thing, there was the fact that the two had gone through so much in their personal relationship and were likely anxiously anticipating the chance to part ways for good. Though they managed to make things work to produce the second series and have maintained a friendly relationship from a distance in the years since, stands to reason that even the friendliest former couple wouldn't want to continue working professionally for longer than necessary. Beyond this, there's also the fact that both John and Connie have gone on record saying that they felt they had done as much as they could with the show. Of course, any creator with integrity wants to end their show before it starts declining in quality. There's certainly something to be said for John Cleese and Connie Booth wanting to end Faulty Towers before the show started to decline in quality, as the 12 episodes of the programme that we have been left with are all exceptional. However, there is one episode that many viewers no longer feel has a place on television due to the fact that a character goes on a racist tirade. If you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to hit the like button to show your support. Also, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be among the first to know when more facts with videos are on their way. Faulty Towers maintains an impressive legacy. The BBC has offered John Cleese and Connie Booth no shortage of money in the decades since Faulty Towers' 1979 ending to come back and expand on the show in some way, but the two have always refused. Despite this, numerous American adaptions of the show have been attempted. Each of these adaptions proved a miserable failure, as is the typical rule with remakes of the sort outside of the office. The original 12 episodes of Faulty Towers continue to reach new audiences today, and the legacy of the show transcends regional boundaries. Though the show is inarguably most beloved in its home of the United Kingdom, there are growing groups of fans all over the world. Faulty Towers has persevered in a way that few other television programs from the time have, and a big part of this is the show's groundbreaking sense of humour. 
The dry, dark humour of Faulty Towers can be seen as a precursor to such shows as Seinfeld, marking another example of the show's international influence. As a celebrity, John Cleese has only increased in notoriety in the years following the end of Faulty Towers, with him becoming a film star in the 1980s, even outside of his work with Monty Python. In the 1990s, there was an idea for a made-for-television feature that would have brought John Cleese back to the world of Faulty Towers. According to John Cleese himself, it would have involved the character of Basil Fawlty accidentally committing terrorism and getting locked in an Italian prison. Though John apparently signed off on the basic idea, he claims that this made-for-television feature never came to be for a variety of reasons. For one thing, he felt that the comedy of Faulty Towers wouldn't work as a feature. For another thing, he claims he was busy with other projects. The show has come under controversy recently. Since John Cleese and Connie Booth continue to refuse to make more Faulty Towers, we're left with the 12 episodes that we have. However, it seems that the future of one of the 12 episodes of Faulty Towers has become tenuous due to the fact that it features a racially insensitive tirade. For those who don't know, the episode that we're referring to is called The Germans, and it's part of Faulty Towers' first series. The Germans first aired in 1975, and its humour was meant to be progressive. The scene in question showed the character of Major Goin delivering a monologue, in which he used the N-word several times in order to refer to members of a cricket team. Of course, the point of the scene wasn't to show that Major Goin was right in using the racial slur. Instead, the humour was meant to come from the fact that Major Goin was behind in the times. Still, the scene has ironically come to be considered behind in the times itself for its mere use of the word in any context. However, the network later decided that it needed to remove the scene entirely. There are other offensive moments from the episode that remain during the censored broadcasts, including a scene where the character of Basil Fawlty impersonates an officer of the Third Reich by engaging in the practice of goose-stepping. For the most part, The Germans remains a beloved episode of Faulty Towers amongst fans. The episode is notable for spawning the catchphrase, Don't mention the war, which some consider to be problematic in and of itself. Even at the time that Faulty Towers first came on the air, the show pushed boundaries in regards to what was considered to be appropriate content for television. Though the show wasn't especially crude, it wasn't afraid to deal bluntly with social issues. In general, this attitude made the show a hit with the public. However, it's understandable that modern audiences have questioned such moments as Major Gowen's racist tirade. In his own defence, John Cleese continues to reiterate that he does not espouse the views that Major Gowen did during that controversial scene. Though some moments from Faulty Tower's two-series run are now considered controversial, the show is well regarded amongst modern audiences thanks to the fact that it ended before its formula grew stale. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know that John Cleese almost signed on for a Faulty Towers reunion movie where Basil Fawlty would have become an unwitting terrorist and that a classic episode of the show was recently censored due to racially insensitive content? As always, like this video to show your support and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be amongst the first to know when more Facts First videos are on their way.